Well, ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to be taking a look at ancient India, uh, taking a look further on with their religion. Yesterday we talked about Hinduism. Um, I recorded a separate video just for that, but we're going to move on to Buddhism today. Anytime you're listening to this video, if you want to have the section pulled up so you can follow along, you may absolutely do so. Now, Buddhism is another ancient religion that we focus on with ancient India in addition to Hinduism. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and read this section. By 600 BC, many Indians began to question Hindu ideas. The Brahmin priests seemed to care only about their temple ceremonies and not about the needs of the people. Ordinary Hindus wanted a simpler, more spiritual religion. Many would find what they needed in Buddhism, a new religion founded by Siddhartha Gautama. Who is the Buddha? Prince Siddhartha Gautama was born around 563 BC in a small kingdom near the Himalayas. Today, this area is, is in southern Nepal. Siddhartha seemed to have it all. He was wealthy and handsome, happily married, and had a fine new son. Then one day, he decided to explore the kingdom beyond the palace walls. As he traveled, he became very upset. He saw beggars, people who were ill, and people broken down by age with no home and nowhere to go. For the first time, he was truly aware of suffering. Then and there, Siddhartha decided to seek an answer to this great riddle. Why did people suffer, and how could their suffering be cured? He left his family and riches and began his search. At first, he lived like a hermit, fasting and sleeping on the hard ground. Siddhartha nearly starved, but he still had no answers to his questions. Then he decided to meditate for as long as it took to get the answer. Legend tells us that Siddhartha sat under a tree to meditate, and after 49 days, he finally understood. It was as if he seen a great light. Siddhartha spent the rest of his life wandering the countryside and telling people what he had discovered. His lessons about life and the nature of suffering became known as Buddhism. To his followers, he became known as the Buddha, or Enlightened One. What is Buddhism? To understand the Buddha's ideas, one first has to see the world as he did. Like any good Hindu, Siddhartha did not think that the normal everyday world was real. Trees, houses, animals, the sky, and the oceans were just illusions. So were poverty and sickness, pain and sorrow. Siddhartha believed that the only way to find the truth about the world was to give up all desires. By giving up the, the desire for fame, the desire for money, and the desire for all worldly things, pain and sorrow would vanish. If a person gave up all desires, he or she would reach nirvana. Nirvana is not a place, but a state of wisdom. The word nirvana came from the Sanskrit word for blowing out a candle flame. The heart of the Buddha's teaching is contained in the Four Noble Truths. The Four Noble Truths are Number 1. Life is full of suffering. Number 2. People suffer because they desire worldly things and self-satisfaction. Number 3. The way to end suffering is to, st is to stop desiring things. Number 4. The only way to stop desiring things is to follow the Eightfold Path. The Buddha's Four Truth says people should follow eight steps to eliminate suffering. The Buddha's eightfold path was this. Number one, know and understand the Four Noble Truths. Number two, give up worldly things and don't harm others. Number three, tell the truth, don't gossip, and don't speak badly of others. Number four, don't commit evil acts like killing, stealing, or living an unclean life. Number five, do rewarding work. Number six, work for good and oppose evil. Number seven, make sure your mind keeps your senses under control. And number eight, practice meditation as a way of understanding reality. One reason the Buddha's ideas became popular was that he did not accept the caste system. A person's place in life depended on the person, he thought. The Buddha did believe in reincarnation. 
but with a difference. If people wanted to stop being reborn into new lives, the Buddha said, they would only have to follow his eightfold path. Many people like the Buddha's message, especially untouchables and low caste Indians. For the first time, these groups heard that they too could reach enlightenment. Buddhism in Southeast Asia For more than 40 years, the Buddha preached his ideas. Disciples gathered around him, and after his death, they spread his message all over Asia. As more and more people practiced Buddhism, disagreements arose about the Buddha's ideas. Finally, Buddhists split into two groups. The first was Theravada Buddhism. Theravada means teachings of the elders. It sees the Buddha as a great teacher, not a god. Buddhist teachers and merchants spread the ideas of Theravada to the south and east. It was adopted in Ceylon in the 200s BC. Ceylon, an island located near the southern tip of India, is now called Sri Lanka. Theravada Buddhism also became popular in Myanmar, Thailand, Cambodia, and Laos. Mahayana Buddhism The second kind of Buddhism is called Mahayana Buddhism. It teaches that the Buddha is a god who came to, sa to save people. Mahayana Buddhists believe that following the Eightfold Path is too hard for most people in this world. They believe that by worshipping the Buddha, instead people will go to a heaven after they die. There they can follow the Eightfold Path and reach Nirvana. Mahayana Buddhists also have special affection for the Bodhisvatas. Bodhisvatas are the enlightened people who postpone going to heaven. Instead, Bodhisvatas have decided to stay on earth to help others and do good deeds. Mahayana Buddhism spread northward into China and from there to Korea and Japan. A special kind of Mahayana Buddhism developed in Central Asia in the country of Tibet. There, it mixed with the Tibet's traditional religion and with Hinduism. In Tibet, the Buddhist leaders called Lamas also led the government. When religious leaders head a government, it is called a theocracy. The Dalai Lama was the Lama who headed the government, and the Panchen Lama was the Lama who led the religion. Both were considered reincarnations of the Buddha. Today, many Buddhists live in countries like Thailand, Cambodia, and Sri Lanka, but few live in India where the Buddha first preached. Going back to uh, this little section right here uh, separately about the Buddha himself. The Buddha lived from 563 to 483 BC. The picture on the right is a small statue based on what he looked like. Siddhartha Gautama the thinker and teacher who now who would later be called the Buddha was born in what, in what is now Nepal. According to legend, his mother had a dream shortly before his birth that was interpreted to mean that her son would become a great leader. The Gautama family belonged to the warrior caste. Siddhartha's father, Sadhodana, ruled a group called the, the Shakas, Shakyas. His mother Maya died shortly after his birth. Siddhartha was very intelligent. According to legend, the young man knew 64 language, languages and mastered all his studies without needing instruction. At age 29, Siddhartha realized that he wanted to search for truth, enlightenment, and a way to rise above suffering. He left his wife, Yasodhara, and son, Rahula, to study with priests. At age 35, Siddhartha is said to have reached full enlightenment while sitting beneath a tree. The Buddha began traveling to teach others about his discoveries and about the nature of life and suffering. Do you have any questions about this particular section? Please see, please see me and I'll answer any questions I can.